Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this second What Works webinar of 2022. Spring is certainly in the air, and we've already entered the month of February. This month, we are building on our well-being series by highlighting new and experienced teachers. My name is Magnus Lindstrom, and I wish you a warm welcome. Today's webinar topic is coined how to build up emotional resilience and enthusiasm, supporting the well-being journey of teachers. We will take a closer look at how Dubai American Academy supports new and existing teachers with orientation and induction training, develop professional development opportunities, and how they nurture the physical and mental health aspects of his teachers. But before we begin, let's take a few steps back. Well-being, well, there is no single agreed upon definition of well-being in the literature, but most definitions agree that well-being is multidimensional comprising physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects. I wish to define well-being in terms of the broad concept of feeling good and functioning well. In other words, the state where teachers perceive job satisfaction, they experience positive emotions more frequently than negative emotions, and they function well as a teacher and in their personal life. Embedding self-care activities, such as physical activity and catching up with friends and setting boundaries around work, can support teachers to improve and maintain their personal well-being. But why is it so important to prioritize teacher well-being in schools? Well, teacher well-being has a significant impact on schools, teachers, and students. Many of the negative effects of low well-being are well publicized with stress or burnt out being linked to attrition. This has led to calls for teacher well-being to be taken seriously for the long-term sustainability of the profession. It is not only teacher attrition that is a concern, but low teacher well-being can negatively affect students. Stressed or burned out teachers have poor relationships with students and the quality of their teaching decreases. When schools prioritize teacher well-being and help to ensure teachers can flourish, this promotes classroom, uh, a better classroom climate and enables high quality teaching that leads to success for students. Before we uh, welcome today's presenters, I wish to simply draw your attention to a simple, tiny uh, menti.com question as an icebreaker before we start. So if I could kindly ask you all to sign on to menti.com using the code 6184-4623. I will post that in the live chat feature at the same time as I'm sharing my screen. So just give me a few seconds here. I'm gonna add that onto the live chat here. Any moment now? Okay, we have it there, and now I'm going to start sharing my screen. So, a Menti question. Let me see. This one. Perfect. I hope everyone can see that. So, let me just uh, go to percent mode. What do I do then? I've gotten already. No, what am I doing? Where am I going to? I can't see that. Anyway, let's start with this one here. So uh, with a few words, looking back at your day as, as a new teacher, what do you wish you would have known then that you know now? You can all see there the uh, Menti uh, code as well. 6184-4623. So, with a few words, looking back at your days as a new teacher, what do you wish you would have known then that you know now? Would you potentially perceive it as it gets better or would you tell yourself, hang in there, you know, or, or, or do you wish you had an inner voice that told you, I'm going to be OK, these feelings of stress and anxiety, they're normal. So what do you wish you would have known then that you know now? Some of you might have think, thought about, don't put too much pressure on yourself or, or uh, just pretend in front of your class that you might have all the answers. Any participants today at all?
Can everyone hear me? No participants? Okay, we'll leave it at that. Don't worry. Let me one second here. Um, I see we have about 75 attendees on the call here. Can everybody see the Menti? Let me share it again if it's possible. Um, just see here. It would be fantastic if we could get some 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 answers here. With a few words, let's try again. Looking back at your days as a new teacher, what do you wish you would have known then that you know now? Anybody wishes to log on to menti.com using the code 6184-4623? I'd be very, very grateful. What do you wish you knew then that you know now? Okay, we, we, we leave it at that. And we understand it's late afternoon. Let me just continue on with the webinar. Uh, I do ask you essentially to stay on to menti.com as we have two questions towards the end of the webinar. Uh, but now I wish to welcome our four ladies, our four presenters for today from the Dubai American Academy. We have uh, Tammy Murphy. She's the GEMS Chief Education Officer and Superintendent CEO. We have Reema Hadid. She is the Director of Inclusion, Social, Emotional and Mental Health and Safeguarding. Uh, Magdalena Back, she's the HR manager, and we have Anne Porterfield, grade nine counselor and school wellbeing champion. And should you have any questions for the ladies throughout their presentation, I do encourage you to use the chat feature on the right hand side of your screen. Post any questions that you have for the ladies throughout their presentation, and I will address them afterwards in, their, in the Q&A section. But for now, please welcome the ladies. Over to you, Tammy. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you so much for letting us share our journey in the well-being of our teachers today. Um, I'm gonna wait till the screen shows up with our presentation. Just give me a second. See, this is part of your well-being, right? To be patient, to be able to wait. Here we go. So as I said, we wanted to talk to you a little bit today about supporting the well-being journey of our teachers here at Dubai American Academy. The um, topics that we're hoping to cover today with you are, first, again, I'd love to just introduce you to this incredible team. We're gonna talk about how we've onboarded our new teachers how we work at supporting all our teachers throughout the year. And then something that's really important, I think, as well about well-being is staff retention. So as Magnus said, and thank you again, Magnus and Maya, for helping us out today. Um, I have the privilege to be um, the superintendent at DA for the last five years. Um, Magda is the most incredible HR manager you ever want to meet, always has the staff's best interests at the heart of all her work. And then this amazing team that not only works with the adults at our school, but also works with the learners at our school. So Rima Hadid, our Director of Inclusion, Social Emotional Intelligence, Mental Health, Safeguarding. She could probably tack on a few more jobs to her. Um, and then lastly, really important part of students enter high school is having Someone as special as Joanne Porterfield to be the grade nine transition counselor. And she certainly is DAA's well being champion. So thanks, Joanne. So we're going to start our presentation today by the beginning of the journey, how we onboard our new teachers. And I'm going to turn that over to Magda to talk about that. Thank you very much, Tammy. Um, I hope you can all hear me. Um, um, welcome to this session. Uh, good afternoon. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about um, our onboarding process and how, how we try to build a strong relationship with our teachers from the very beginning and build a strong sense of belonging to our community. Um, so we connect with our teachers um, right from the beginning 
uh, around this time in January, February and March, we sign um, our contracts for next year um, and we sign the, uh, the offers of employment. Um, and we, we, we try to connect with staff uh, from that very moment to build a seamless um, transition into the DAA community and Dubai, not only for our, for our teachers, but as well for their families. We know how stressful it might be to, to relocate yourself um, and even more stressful if you're relocating with your family. Um, uh, from the very beginning, we also share information with our staff to help them um, plan their relocation um, to Dubai and the UAE. Uh, we have some information readily available um, on topics such as uh, attestation of documents. We know that this is a complicated process. It can be quite lengthy, so we provide all the information to our staff um, on uh, how to sponsor um, visas for the dependents, how to relocate a pet, and in general, information about life in Dubai. Um, we also share with our newbies um, staff and faculty newsletter that we sent out to our existing staff on a monthly basis uh, to build up excitement and, and to um, a little bit more sense of belonging. Uh, so uh, new staff also feel that they are part of the community and they see what's going on at the school, what events they might be um, uh, involved in next year when they join us. Um, we also give our newbies access to onboarding platforms from the very beginning. Um, we create um, as well uh, uh, access to our internal DAA Google Drive with lots of um, resources, uh, K-12 as well as divisional resources and information. Um, this process helps our new joiners uh, alleviate some of that initial stress, puts them at ease, um, and it's a one-stop shop for information and resources for them. Um, uh, around March, uh, we also connect our newbies with our new teachers coordinators. Um, those are three teachers, one from each division. Um, why, do we, why do we choose to uh, involve our teachers, existing teachers in this process? Because we feel that they can relate to what our new joiners uh, are going through and experiencing when relocating to, uh, to Dubai and DAA. Um, uh, it also provides first-hand information uh, to our joiners um, um, and advice, practical advice especially. Uh, the role of new teacher coordinators is mainly to liaise uh, between uh, new staff and our uh, school. Um, uh, they are the first points of contact for our uh, newbies. Uh, they pass on clear communication and any relevant information uh, that we want to share with our newbies. Uh, they facilitate a buddy system with our existing uh, staff member. Um, uh, they also um, uh, organize and plan and uh, help us build orientation and induction uh, week programs, including events, uh, whether uh, at school or outside of the school, and so much more. Uh, they are just uh, such a great help uh, with their knowledge and experience, um, um, and, and we really appreciate them. Um, they also help building connections. We know that those relationships are um, such an important part of the onboarding process and that we all need that support group uh, around us from the very beginning. Um, our new teacher coordinators also uh, maintain and update our DA orientation website, which is linked to our uh, internal Google Drive um, uh, called DA Hub. Um, uh, that website has uh, lots of uh, additional information about relocating to Dubai, about expat communities, about the residential area where our new joiners will be staying and any nearby shops, anything that you can do um, uh, around their, uh, their apartments, um, any uh, information about the UAE laws and regulations, type of power socket that we use uh, here in the UAE, anything that you can imagine um, is plugged in that on that website, uh, including an introductory video from our uh, new joiners. Um, uh, to make the onboarding process a little bit more personalized, um, um, we also schedule uh, multiple Zoom meetings and Q&A sessions with our new teacher coordinators um, and HR and SOT members and the head of school. Um, we also have a robust plan for our orientation and induction weeks 
that we share with our newbies well in advance so they can prepare and they can see and what's planned for uh, every day. Um, we have uh, um, a nice mixture of informative sessions, but as well a little bit more fun sessions and events uh, during the day or after um, after uh, the school. Um, um, some of the events that our new joiners um, uh, also help us coordinate uh, are, are things that uh, would help them on a practical note, but as well that would um, introduce them to, to the, uh, the community here in the UAE and Dubai and the DAA. Um, we, we, we plan a visit to uh, Mall of the Emirates and the supermarket at the very beginning, IKEA, uniform store, um, we organize quiz nights as well, um, a cultural dinner at the Sheikh Mohammed uh, Center of Cultural Understanding. Uh, there are multiple icebreakers um, coordinated by our new teacher um, coordinators as well during the orientation uh, week. Um, and for every single person that arrives from abroad, we make sure that there is a, a member of our SOT team uh, to meet them at the airport. Uh, so as soon as they arrive in the arrivals hall, uh, we have a member of our staff to meet them, greet them, um, uh, to, to purchase a SIM card at the very beginning to stay connected and make sure that we can check in with them. Um, we, we provide them with transportation and the SLT member uh, drives with our staff um, uh, to the apartment to make sure everything is okay there. Uh, there are no last minute surprises. Um, and then we stay connected with our new staff until they actually come for their first day of orientation at DAA. Um, our onboarding process doesn't end there though. Uh, we don't, we, we, we still follow up with our staff after those first two initial weeks. Um, we, um, we send feedback forms after the first two weeks and then run three months into uh, their new role and here live at, at DAA. Um, uh, that's, that's such a valuable feedback. Uh, we try to make this process better every year um, uh, and we reflect on our practices to, to make it better and to make sure that everybody feels comfortable and welcomed. Um, so some of, uh, some of uh, this year's feedback was uh, really great. Um, uh, staff felt that the onboarding process was as welcoming as possible. Uh, we made new teachers feel welcomed and excited to join the team. We shared a culture of kindness and support. Um, they also said that the DAA is amazing and they really enjoy working here um, and that it has been great to feel valued again and part of a school that finds a good balance between being aspirational and looking out for the well-being of staff. Thank you so much and over to Tammy. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, our next presenter, please. Is that Joanne or Rima? I. Oh, it's Tammy, yeah? Please go ahead, Tammy, if it's you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I was waiting for my little red box. Can uh, you hear? Yeah. Okay, we can hear you. okay great. You. <clears throat> you, you were right, Magnus. Joanne's up next, but I was just going to give a little intro. So Magnus talked about all we do kind of before your first day of arrival at DAA because we really believe it starts from the moment they commit to Dubai American Academy. But now everyone's here um, and we've started our orientation and they're part of the DAA family. Well, we know that that support should run throughout their entire career. So what Joanne and Reem are going to talk a, bit, a little bit about now are supporting all our teachers and really focus in on the work of the Wellness Committee. So I'll turn it back over to Joanne now. Okay, hi everybody. Um, so I'm part of the Wellness Committee and I just wanted to share a few words about how it got started. 
So after reading the results from the KHDA Adult Wellbeing Survey, talking to staff, it was decided that a wellbeing committee would enhance our school and continue to grow our bond as community members. We know the stronger relationship we have with others, the more empathy we have for each other, we are happier and in turn, our workplace is happier. Our journey started by making sure that our committee was inclusive. We wanted to make sure that we had members from the teaching staff, the counselors, the administration, the front of house and operations. Our team is voluntary and we are happy to always welcome new members. We began by creating a mission statement, which you can read there on the screen, and we introduced it to our staff members. We then started asking staff members how they're feeling and if they had any ideas of what we could be doing to improve wellness at the school. We made it clear that we wanted to hear from them. We then began creating sustainable programs as well as um, small celebrations of special days throughout the year, such as Mental Health Week. Now we have a bi-weekly meeting that we work on following our mission statement. And as we will hear about later, some of the activities that we have, that we have planned. Hello. So I guess the first question you ask is why is creating a wellness pro program in school so important? It really is because the happier, more secure, more content, more supported our staff feel, the more they're going to give to our kids. To build an efficient and effective wellness committee, we have realized that there are five components that are crucial in the effectiveness and implementation of a program. Time. You need to realize you need to give time to understand what others need. You need to make time to implement wellness within the school. Communication. Listen to your staff. Talk to your team. Listen to your team. Get information from your team. Systems. Create systems from their ideas. Systems that will work. Systems that make sense to them. Structure. Create a strong structure. The most important thing is modeling. It's more important than the initiative itself. Personalized attention. Make every single person feel that they're the only one. This is their family, their community, their second home. So make your staff feel that way. You have to remember in a person's life, you can cut your day into three parts. The first third, you spend at work, the second third you spend at home, and the last third you spend sleeping. So if we can make the first third so much better, then your team will feel better. They're going to see things through a more positive lens and be able to be a more valuable contributor to the community. However, to bring the well-being strategy to life, we need to gain the accurate insight and trust and identify issues to implement improvement. By the most important thing is by giving your staff a voice. Some ways we did that were through temperature checks, which gains a picture of how the staff feel. We created something called the Wellness Heroes. It encouraged staff to nominate and recognize efforts amongst their community to build emotional resilience, empathy, and acknowledgement. Then we also sent, did something called Spots On, which is a monthly snapshot that we created. It's a website based on our mascot that connects others, builds community, creates a safe space for people to talk, showcase their talents, and gain information on wellness. It's a one-stop shop. We've talked about listening to the staff. And one of the requests that the staff had was to be given more time in school to work on their well-being. In the past, we've had workshops to teach staff about well-being, what they can do, but they were asking for time for their own personal growth. From this came Take Care Tuesdays. This began as a whole staff physical exercise and meditation event where everybody participated in the gym and evolved into a few Tuesdays in PD time to have sessions for staff, such as sports, art, walking the track, dream boards, 
we tr we're trying to make it as diverse as possible. These are run by the staff or they're independent. Setting aside this time by SLT sends the message that they value wellness in their staff and in themselves. Another challenge that we faced was having teachers feeling sad, lonely, and disconnected when they were quarantining or when they, they themselves had caught COVID. We have many single staff on, on <clears throat> many single people on our staff who felt very lonely. From this came our COVID, COVID initiative of COVID outreach. One counselor per division was given the names of the staff who were out. They would reach out to the staff, write some notes for themselves, and if this person was really not doing well, then would notify SLT. It really is amazing how picking up the phone can make someone feel so much better. Great. So we've talked a lot about systems and structures that we felt really helped our teachers, mental health, well-being, physical health. But I think there's another component at schools we need to think about. And that is staff retention. So we're going to talk a little bit about this wellness journey is, is not just one giant step, but it's a lot of little steps. And we think that once staff really feel committed to a place and you have a high level of staff retention, you really help to nurture that community. Rima, did you have something else you needed to say? And I cut in? No, you're all right? Okay, all right. She was smiling, so I just wanted to check. See, that's part of well-being, right? Checking on one another. So, okay. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about ways we work on staff retention here at Dubai American Academy. And you've had a long day, so we're going to start with a little bit of fun. And anyone can do this. And I bet as you're sitting there, you're thinking, oh, our school did something even more fun than that. But, you know, as the head of school, I wanted the teachers to know that I really appreciated how hard they've been working, right? It's been hard. You know, class with close context, COVID, you have some online, some in the class. Um, coming out of two years of this. So I borrowed a bike from a second grader and we have about 400 and some staff and filled my basket and kept refilling my basket with cookies. And I went, we are a four story school, four by four on my bike to deliver them cookies. So we thought you'd like to see a little bit of ways we make people feel special here at DAA. Show you a little clip from that video. I have to say, it was even good for my well-being because my legs never got such a workout, I have to say. Um, I think the other way we work on a staff feeling that they're cared about is just making sure that we find joy and fun in every day. And we thought since we were with our wonderful colleagues from KHDA, we'd use this to show you what happened all throughout our school when they KHDA announced that they had lifted some of the restrictions in school. So this is about finding fun and joy. And here's some folks on our middle school floor. We'll just hit that video. <laughs> so thank you for that. But but part of uh, staff retention is that people know that we work hard and we play hard. We have fun. Folks need to feel appreciated. And I think you out there know like what are the special things that would really resonate with your staff for us we really wanted to honor longevity and service because we we feel so blessed that people have stayed with us for so many years so we started this system on the first you know day of in service when all our staff together would be to give them honorary pins for five years of service 10 15, 20, we even got to give a 25 year service pin. 
And we know that people appreciate that because we see them kind of line their lanyards um, with this badge of honor for the devotion to the school. So I think, you know, that's important. There's so many fun ways. I bet you you have at least 20 better ways I want you to email and tell me. But little things like thanking your staff a latte with a little drink in the morning. That was something our ES staff recently did to remind the teachers how much they're appreciated. So I think it's all about taking the time to stop and make sure people feel that they're appreciated. And that's little things from a note, even if you don't have the budget to buy some of these things, a handwritten note I think still goes a really long way. I think part of well-being is having your intellectual um, ability stimulated and nurtured. And so I think one way schools need to think about that for educators is making sure that people know we're in support of their career development. We're going to surround you by great colleagues, but we're also always wanting to know where else do you want to go and how can we support you in that work? We all work on distributed leadership in our schools. Someone has a passion, you let them run a committee. Someone says, you know, I might see myself someday being an assistant principal. To take the time to sit down with them with their CV and kind of charting a multi-year path to help them get there. And we have uh, also instituted here coaching. So career coaches, we have a wonderful colleague Rory that sits down. He's a teacher, psychology teacher, who sits down and will help people have a one-to-one -one conversation and reflect on their next step. This next slide, it's probably hard to see the details, but I wanted you to kind of get a sense of the variety because I think another way that people are intellectually stimulated, which contributes to their well-being, is by, by being part of all the planning for their growth and development. You know, it's probably um, could be easy for administration before staff comes back in August to sit and plan everything for the two weeks. But we really know that just like children that need to have a voice and choice, teachers need that too, to take ownership in the work. So we work really hard to have a schedule that really includes what our teachers are telling us they want to spend time doing, thinking about, learning about, for their own intellectual growth. And it's really important that people have time to grow. It can't always happen on your lunch hour or after school. There's so many things you need to do. So carving out time for professional learning is super important. As you know, we are part of GEMS Education. And I just wanted to spotlight at DAA and of course, because of GEMS Education, we really speak about pathways to progression and taking this time with teachers or middle level leaders or senior leaders to really chart a path. And that looks like one to one conversations, setting goals, arranging time for people to kind of fill in any learning gaps that they may feel they have to get to that next path. So these um, illustrations kind of show how we work on that as a school and as a company to support um, career development and progression. We feel like the data is telling us, as you can see, um, because we, we have a feeling right in our hearts that we've been doing good work, um, but what we wanted to show you, um, I've had the pleasure, as I said, to be here now for quite a few years, and we're looking at, you know, 238, 235 teachers. You can kind of see the numbers there. They vary from year to year. But when we look at um, the this year in particular, we, we're at about a 91.5. Somebody out there is probably doing the math, saying she's slightly off. About a 91% retention rate. And for us, that was a really strong indicator that the systems and structures we've been trying to put in place by empowering teachers, by listening to their voice. It's resulted in a shift as far as our levers um, and therefore our retention rate, which we think is really critical to everyone's well-being because when you are familiar with the colleagues and you've surrounded yourself and made a family, it, it really does affect how you're feeling when you come back to work or come in after a weekend every year. As we kind of close, 
I love um, I love this quote. Um, it's a journey, right? And we all just have to commit to that journey. Take those steps. Keep believing and keep working. Um, when we kind of step back and say, OK, this is what we've been able to accomplish in five years. What will we think about next for us? We have been thinking about even more ways to expand the wellness committee. Um, and of course, I know this is about teachers well-being, but how do we keep including more and more students in our divisional well-being um, groups that help influence us? And we really wanted to think a lot about this golden thread um, here at Dubai American Academy around well-being and really more formalize and articulate what that means from the time you're four to me, 58. What does that look like um, as part of the DAA community? So that's some work that we're going to do in our next strategic plan around well-being and social emotional learning. So thank you so much for letting us share our journey. I hope there was a nugget that was helpful and we're always anxious to hear anything that you'd love to share. So please email us here at DAA. We love um, the wonderful ideas that come from our colleagues. Thank you for letting us share. Thank you thank so, you. so much, Tammy, and thank you, Tammy's team. It's been wonderful to listen to your presentation. I'm sure there's several nuggets to take out of this. Wonderful and some impressive well-being initiatives. So I want to say a big thank you for that. And I do apologize for the technical difficulty before, but I thought, well, let's just try one more time. We have received some wonderful answers. So let me start sharing my screen again. Just hold on a minute here. And we'll just, before we kick off with the, um, the Q&A aspect of this webinar, let's just go back. Fundamental question for, for a few seconds here. With a few words, looking back at your days as a new teacher, what do you wish you would have known then that you know now? So. We have an answer here uh, that your toolkit will grow and you will get, uh, get faster in solving the problems you face daily. Absolutely. I wish I knew what I know now to never compromise my well-being. Absolutely, because it eventually affects my classes and my students. Wonderful to see. To take a deep breath and take one day at a time. I also learned to ask as many questions as needed. Do not forget to ask for help. Certainly, certainly. New policies, work environments, getting new teachers on board in all aspects of school activities and staffing. Another person is saying technology and its role in conducting assessments. Absolutely, technology as we know moves very, very, very fast. Roles and responsibilities and job creation, sorry, description of all leaders I work with. For example, middle leaders or senior leaders, etc. Catering to the needs of individual students and personalized instructions. I have improved my subject knowledge and communication skills and my teaching skills. That is wonderful. And I think we end here with go slow, go slow to go fast. Absolutely. I want to thank you for that. So uh, everyone, thank you for still being with us. Uh, we have almost 100 attendees of this webinar. This is wonderful. We're now going to start with the Q&A aspect. So I do encourage you, those who haven't posted any questions, please use the live chat feature on your right hand side to post any questions that you might have for the ladies. And let me uh, go back into we've received quite a few questions in our in our registration forms and a lot of those questions talks about balancing work and life. So ladies, I do ask you, how do you create clear boundaries between home and school? What are your thoughts and ideas around that? Do you recommend to set a reasonable time for leaving school each day and stick to it? How do you find ways to to turn uh, off your teacher mindset? Should teachers possibly develop an end of day ritual to help them switch mindsets? What are your thoughts about that? I, I think everyone's, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, I think everyone's different. I mean, I think it is about finding what's right for you. Like, would you rather stay a little later at work and get everything done? Or do you prefer to go home because you want to be with your kids to do their homework? And then once you put them to bed, you set a limit of some work that you feel you need to get done at night. So I think it's about finding that right fit for you. And, and I think many of us are so committed 
to this calling of education, you, you do have to make sure that you switch off, right? Because we someone said, I think in the mentee, right? If you leave here late, go home, barely get dinner on the table and then work and mark papers and inspection until 11, you're just not going to be your best self. Mm -hmm. But I also think if you find yourself in that kind of cycle where you really are overwhelmed and you feel like that's the only way you do you can survive, go talk to your administration, let them know. I know we've had different points in time where maybe I was asking a little too much. And it, without that voice to hear, have someone say it's too much, well, then we figure it out together a way we can kind of take our foot off the gas for a while. So it's really yeah. important that your voice is heard. Wonderful, wonderful. We have another question here regarding the, the men, mentoring structures, a sort of a buddy system. Ladies, you did mention you have a buddy system. Uh, at your school, as teaching can be an emotionally taxing job that throws up many different challenges. How effective is your buddy system and how does it work in more detail? If you can just describe it a bit more in detail and how does it complement the role of the teacher coordinator supporting new teachers? So what should schools, you know, our audience, what should they be, be aware of when they're developing a buddy system? Okay, I'll start, but Magda, you can pick it up, right? So, <laughs> so uh, we're all waiting. Who's going to answer? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think <clears throat> there's formal structures you put in place so that you're sure, right? So every grade level in elementary school has a learning leader. That's your point person for your grade level team that you could always know you can go to. And as you move to secondary, I'm sure many of us have heads of department that you know, like as far as school business goes, you have that person. But uh, when they're coming, this is where Magda and the new teacher get involved because they buddy people up. So Mag Magda, do you want to talk about that? Yes, sure. Um, so just uh, actually maybe a week ago, uh, we, we hired uh, a science teacher and she's one of those people who like to know everything uh, right from the beginning um, and have all the resources right away. Uh, so we connected her with our uh, head of uh, science department um, who started sharing all the, the resources and everything that she has on curriculum, on teaching and learning and live situations. And that's, that's what we do with every single person. We try to find the best person that could answer all the questions that the person might have in conjunction with myself and the, the new teacher coordinators. So like I said, um, uh, we have three uh, coordinators, one from each division. Um, so we also pair them together with the head of department or the great leader uh, and myself. And together we, we, we try to help with any questions they might have. If we cannot answer that question, we then connect them with somebody else, whether that be uh, somebody from IT or our manager of school operations, if they have any specific questions uh, regarding apartments. Um, so there's such a great support group that we can uh, offer to every single person. Um, I think it just makes, uh, ma makes a huge difference. Thank you, Magdalena, for that answer. We have another question here regarding creating a welcoming staff room. Making the staff room a relaxed and comfortable place is important as, uh, is important as, as staff need somewhere to escape. Finding the time to relax with colleagues and taking a real break from the classroom is crucial. What are your impressions of the importance of a welcoming staff room at DAA and what importance does it have at your school essentially? Joanne, why don't you finish that thought you were going to share and then we can just weave right into the staff room. What do you think? Sounds good, if that's OK. OK, so I'm I'm one of the mentors and and it's non academic for me, so I've been paired with people. I have a family, so I've been paired with two lovely teachers that also have a family so that they can ask me questions that pertain to that, like crazy things like am I able to get the size of sheets that I need when I get there and so on. But I've also been given a list of like in the second week, take a coffee to your person and just chat with them. So there's like a, a set amount of things that you can do. You can always do more, but there's some suggestions. And I think having that reminder also saying like, OK, at the end of the month, you know, just check on them, see how they're doing. I think that's very um, important. Thank you. Tammy, you had a few words as well? Or? 
Yeah, I think around the like the spaces like here at DA, we don't have like one big staff room. So we've been mindful of your point, Magnus, of like yeah. they need a space to go. So, you know, we have like these collaboration spaces where, you know, I bought some silly swinging chairs from Ace Hardware. No advertisement for Ace, but. You know, they're kind of fun and not your typical teacher chair. We've made sure we put a lot of benches when it's not too hot because sometimes it's just nice to get some air um, and sit and feel the sun on your face. So we found with our large staff, it's not just one staff room, but lots of spaces they can go because some people prefer that kind of darker, quiet corner where they can just have a peace of mind. Um, and some prefer to be out on the picnic table by the food truck and grab a coffee and, and feel the sun. So I think it, these are great things because there's all different types of schools on the call. call. And it just requires some creativity and thought and not necessarily a big CapEx budget, right? Because um, I can assure you those chairs from Ace Hardware weren't very expensive, but people sure love sitting in them and swinging, um, right? And and just- That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> great, great, great. We have, another, we have another question here live from our audience, you know, it talks about depression. How would you help a teacher who's experiencing depression, grief and loss to become more enthusiastic? I do, I do know you, you just mentioned the body system, you mentioned the wellness uh, uh, center as well. How would you approach that? Go through the steps, that would be fantastic. I bet you Rima's coming in yeah, for that one. There we go. Rima here would like to help, fantastic. Thank you, Rima. Over to you. So usually if we have um, someone who's depressed, um, we understand that it could be many different reasons. So they always have someone to talk to. So whether they want to go to HR, they want to come to myself um, at, or anybody else. So we always make them feel comfortable and then we let them know that, you know, it's a safe space, non-judgmental. We're not here to judge you. But we also are very mindful that the out outsourced resources are quite expensive to get to. So sometimes they really do need therapy or they do need that extra care. So we go above and beyond and really try to connect them with people, with other consultants that could help them. So, um, for example, I know a lot of, you know, we're quite, we make it a point to connect with different consultants and companies and clinics and try to get, you know, special offers or get free, you know, seminars at, or connect with the Lighthouse where they have different kind of Grief, um, they have like grief seminars. There are many different um, free uh, workshops. So that's how kind of we really help staff with depression. And we just let them know that it's okay to speak up. You're not gonna be judged. You're not gonna be fired. You're not gonna be, you know, um, there's not gonna be an X on you and we're gonna help you through it. So I think that's a really I important thing. Thank you, Rima, for that answer. We have another question here for, for, for Tammy, particularly. Uh, a, a study of over 400 elementary schools in the US found that superintendents, principals, their actions play a key role in developing and sustaining relational trust in schools. And they did mention in this article, there are four criteria under the umbrella of relational trust. They talk about respect, they talk about competence and core responsibilities, they talk about personal regard, and they talk about integrity. Pam, if you reflect a bit if, on your role, what can you do more of? Or what additional support do you think will improve trust between management and teachers and between teachers themselves? For instance, are you, are you applying an open door policy or how often do you wander the corridors of your school? I would be, I would be grateful for your reflection. Well, my team will back me up on this because it kind of feels funny when you say it yourself, right? But I mean, I think, you know, I, I, I've been, it's my 38th year and, and I, I love what I do. So I think I get here early, people know that. So my door is always open and I stay late. So you want to pop by at my office, actually, as I said earlier, it's glass in the front of the school. So you can see I'm here. Come on in. I, I think having an appointment is, is not a good idea, right? So I think that's something. And I think you you have to mean what you say and say what you mean. I mean, I, I think leaders really all over the world and especially here in the UAE, you understand that you're a model for everything you want in your school. So, you know, my energy level, how I'm feeling, that really does affect the staff. So 
I tried to be visible. I tried to, well, I'm naturally a pretty happy person. Um, but, you know, I, I try to make sure that I try to see the rose in everything and not the thorn. Um, and I think that's part of it. Wonderful advice. I like that. We have another question here from our audience. Uh, please elaborate on how you help teachers when they feel overwhelmed with the workload. Maybe Reema, if you can touch upon that as well, when, when they feel it's too much, who do they reach out to? So we always, they always have an open communication with their principals, with their division leads. Um, and also, you know, as um, Tammy was saying, that's an open door policy um, going to see her. But we always, but sometimes they feel comfortable going to somebody else. So if they do feel overwhelmed or overworked, we always try to give them advice. We always try to tell them to advocate and speak up and there is a solution. So usually in most times, I mean, obviously everybody feels overwhelmed at one point or another. Um, once we give them that advice um, to go speak up and, and like Tammy said, speak up and we can try to find a solution. But if we don't hear your voice, we don't know what's going on. So I think that's like we basically are just that ear to listen to and, um, and advise them, give them that yep. advice on how to do it. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we're nearing towards the end of this Q&A. Uh, I also want to just touch upon briefly, we, we all know that we're coming towards the end of five years of, of, of the Dubai Students Census uh, a survey that we've conducted for the last five years. So I just want to touch upon uh, your reflection from, from DAA's point of view. How will you continue measuring staff well-being throughout the year? Post the Dubai Wellbeing Adult Survey, essentially. Will you continue doing surveys, or will you see, will you do something different? Do you have an action plan in place? I do. I did notice in the presentation, uh, Tammy, that you did mention that you're you're thinking about increasing the wellness committee with more 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 teachers and more students. Share just some final thoughts regarding you know going forward for the next let's say two to five years. Yeah, I think. <clears throat> what we're clear about is that you you can't get enough input, right? So it's about being relentless about finding ways to make sure people's voices are heard, right? So the survey response wasn't as high as we wanted. Well, then how do we do that? Small group conversations. So I think we are we're always interested in increasing participation in these. Uh, kind of things that we've planned. And I think it is also about responding to the needs of that year, right? Because the wellness committee needs to be agile, right? And the stresses of early COVID, right? Two years ago now are different than now. And then I, I anticipate that there will be stress once we're completely back to full operation too. Because, you know, I'm thinking of you know, 100 staff that really haven't been part of DAA when there was not some regulation around functioning in a normal way. So I think it's about really being fluid with how you think about it and responding to how the, situ the situation and how staff are feeling at that time. Great, thank you so, so much. Ladies, that leaves us towards the end of this webinar. Uh, thank you for those lovely answers. I do encourage you all to uh, go back on to menti.com. I will, I will share my screen again. We have two final questions here that I'd love for your, you to answer in one second here. So uh, if you could all, let's see here. We have a question here relating to overall, how satisfied were you with this this webinar, I'd, I'd appreciate if you could all just make some notes down there, one to five, I'd really appreciate that. Once you've done that, I'm happy if you could all write some a few words of what was the main takeaways of today's webinar. Greatly appreciate your, your, your responses here. What were the main takeaway of today's webinar? We've had some fantastic initiatives presented to us from DAA. Magdalena talked about the induction and the orientation, how, how, how careful they are and how welcoming they are, meeting teachers at the airport and essentially guiding them throughout the whole process and as well having an induction week and so forth. And the wonderful buddy system that we have at DAA as well, fantastic. And the care and nurture and the open door policy by Tammy and her team, that is wonderful. So what has been the main takeaway from today's webinar? Wellness is a journey, certainly. That is certainly a journey, a journey throughout life. It's about finding that balance, work-life balance that we're all struggling with and we're trying to achieve, but not easy. 
So what has been the main takeaway from today's webinar? I hope many of you in the audience will, 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 will take some of these suggestions on, whether whether it's whether we have you have the resources or not financially, the, it's the small steps, it's the human connection that's really important when it comes to well-being. So we'd appreciate some of your answers. What has been the main takeaway from today's webinar? How to work happily, absolutely. It's important to spread joy, spread joy among your colleagues and among your, your students. Surprise others, colleagues, with simple things and make them happy and smile, absolutely. A happy teacher is a, is a, is a happy student and vice versa. I really yeah. enjoyed learning different ways how DAA takes care of their staff, wonderful. You can feel that Tammy truly cares for her staff. Well done, Tammy. Tammy seems like an amazing leader who's very positive and I'm sure that her staff are super happy. Thank you. Wonderful words there for you, Tammy. Don't blush. <laughs> uh, talking to someone is always helpful. Helpful. So speak up, indeed. I'll take on uh, uh, Rima's advice there. Certainly, you know, uh, speak up, whether it's to, to, to management or, or to colleagues. Always worth speaking up. There's always support. Ways of maintaining staff wellness. That's wonderful that you took that away. Let's see, we have another response here. Well-being matter, absolutely. Well-being matter, certainly. It's the year of well-being every year, I'm sure. And I think we in Dubai, we've taken on, particularly with the, with the survey of the last five years, really put in place well-being at the heart of the school. Without well-being, it's, it's not fun. So I wanna say a big, big thank you to everyone for choosing to spend the afternoon with us. Somebody to share when you feel overwhelmed, absolutely. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of you who, who chose to, to spend the afternoon with us rather than going to Expo and to uh, see if you could have a peek of Prince William, but that's wonderful. I just don't want to let everybody know that we, we have a library here on, on our webpage called newdaysnewways.khga.gov.ae. So for any of you that missed this or had, have colleagues who missed this, this uh, webinar, do go into the library section there. You'll find our previous webinars and you also find our upcoming webinars. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen here and I wish to say a big, big thank you to all of those who, who attended today's uh, webinar. I want to say a big thank you to Dubai American Academy and the ladies. The What Works X webinar series continues throughout the spring semester and we look forward to seeing you again very, very, very soon. Page Day wishes you a continuous, wonderful evening and it is a bye from myself and my lovely presenter ladies here. So. Everyone have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.